Hello everyone, welcome to Real Science Challenge. I'm Kent Louie, science teacher and talking head. Talking about best practice in science education and broadcasting from beautiful Vancouver, Canada. If you're using standards-based assessment or standards-based grading or SBG for short, you may have been told you can't use multiple choice to assess standards because number one, multiple choice generally focuses on memorization recall of facts, while standards are focused on doing science skills. And number two, multiple choice can be correctly guessed. While there's no guessing as to whether you can perform a standard or not, either you can perform a skill or you can't. So, can multiple choice questions be used to assess standards? Well, yeah, they absolutely can. And here are some examples of questions I've used to assess curricular standards like questioning predicting or planning and conducting. But to ensure we're using multiple choice to assess standards effectively, we need to re-examine the multiple choice questions we use and number two, come up with certain types of multiple choice questions we consistently use to assess standards. Now I'll go over what I do a little in a little, with a little more detail, excuse me. But before I continue, handouts for this episode are available at realsciencechallenge.com slash EP54. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, truth be told, I love multiple choice because crafting good multiple choice questions and good multiple choice responses is both an art and a science. You know, when I come across a good multiple choice question, there's just something about it that's makes, that makes me say, aha, you know, that's a really cool way of testing that idea. And I think all teachers, not just myself, sort of geek out that way too. And that's how I approach using multiple choice in SBG. I look to see if a question gives me that aha feeling. Thus, you know, there are some questions that simply don't give me that feeling at all. And these are the stereotypical multiple choice questions that are based on recall, like a question that asks, you know, what is the definition of or state the law of whatever. You know, we need to get rid of these types of questions because they are more memorization than skill. Now, having said that, I'm not saying that there isn't going to be content on a standards based test. Of course, there's going to be content, just that the content will be used or assessed differently on our test. So we need to come up with some types of questions to use for SBG. And here's the key I've discovered to doing this effectively and efficiently. For each competency I'm assessing, I use the same passage types and types of questioning. So for example, for standards or competencies related to questioning and predicting, I give students the passage type known as the dueling hypotheses passage, where I bring up multiple hypotheses to a phenomenon, and students need to analyze the hypotheses and form predictions off of them. Okay, so here's a passage I created where I give students three hypotheses for the formation of acne, which is of interest to students because, you know, puberty and all. So one hypothesis says that acne is caused by diet. Another states that acne is caused by bacteria and dirt. And still a third hypothesis says that acne is caused by cosmetics. Then the questions I tend to ask are ones that require students to see which hypothesis or hypotheses will be supported or refuted by specific samples of evidence. For example, this question says, uh, Jordan comes down with the flu and the doctor prescribes antiviral medication to fight the infection. During treatment, the pimples on Jordan's face disappear. This supports which of the following hypothesis? You know, I also like uh, this, type of, uh, this type of question where I say, assuming hypothesis three is true, what would be the effect of wearing water-soluble cosmetics? You know, students have to think about the hypotheses and see what is true and predict a correct answer. Thus, since I use a consistent format in questions and passages, students get regular practice on how to analyze and predict 
the effect of different hypotheses or hypotheses. And because I'm basing passages on the content I'm assessing, I'm providing a variety of examples and, and things for students to look at as well. Also, the consistency in format saves me time in creating standards-based questions because I've already decided on the types of questions I'm going to ask, which is half the battle when coming out with the test. And isn't this what we as teachers want at the end of the day? Don't we all want to save time? Check out my handouts where I also provide an example of how I assess standards for competencies related to planning and conducting. Now that's it for this episode. Please smash the like or subscribe button or leave a comment below. And handouts, once again, are available at realsciencechallenge.com slash EP54. Thanks for watching. And let's talk science education again soon.